Why did you bring my water up, boy? Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the saints watching on the camera, to the saints that we don't know about, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's go to, uh, or actually, you know what I'm saying, last week, Brother T, what we talk about? <clears throat> last week was the fall of Judah. All right. Yeah. So remember, we had the temple got, you know what I'm saying, got towed up. They lit everything on fire. You know what I'm saying? Put everything down for us. They took all the people of the land. They only left the poorest of the land. They gave them the fields. Mm -hmm. All right. And then uh, after that, uh, you had uh, you had Gedaliah, who was made governor over the people. Right. And governor, he was made governor over the people and he was. He was subservient to, to Babylon as he was supposed to be. But then you had uh, uh, Ishmael that came out of uh, Egypt. And when he came up, he was like, man, come on. He tried to rebel. He ended up killing Gedaliah and then trying to escape, you know what I'm saying, running back around. So, you know what I'm saying, you have our people that, that went through the calamity I was prophesied. Remember Ezekiel, he was used as a sign to the people, him not being able to speak. You know what I'm saying? He was used as a sign to the people that his wife was taken away and he couldn't even mourn about it. Right? He just had to keep it pushing. Had to keep everything prepared and keep it pushing. Most like God said that would be a sign for how our people were. Right? He also told Ezekiel that he uh, he would regain his speech on the day that one of the men of, uh, of Judah escaped and came and told Ezekiel like, hey, you know what I'm saying? The temple is gone. He said, on that day, when that man comes to Ezekiel, he'll be able to speak. We're going to pick that up in the, let's, uh, let's pick that up in Ezekiel chapter 33. It's Ezekiel chapter 33. All right, we're going to see where Ezekiel get his speech back. It's Ezekiel chapter 33. Give me verse one. Again, the word of Yahuwah you came think about it, it, it kind of remind us, my bad, Brother T, uh, it kind of reminds us of another situation that happened. We don't have to grab it, but you remember somebody else, somebody else came and escaped and brought news to somebody. You know what I mean? Y'all remember that? When, uh, when Saul died. That's right. Remember when Saul died, you had a brother, one of our, you, know, you had a, uh, not, not one of the brothers, but you had a, a gentleman escape. I forget where he is from. He might have been from Edom. But he uh he escaped. And as he escaped, he he ran and he told David, he was like, Yeah, Saul, Saul is dead. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? And he told him what happened, and David didn't like that. Right? This is uh this is Ezekiel chapter 33. Let's start at verse one. Let's read it on through. Again, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coasts and set him for their watchmen. If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he bloweth the trumpet and warn the people. Then who, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. Right. He, heard, he said, listen, everybody got a watchman is what he's saying. He said, everybody got a watchman now. So now if the man, if you a watchman and the man do his job and he blow the horn as a warning and you hear the warning, you like, man, ain't no big deal. He said, your blood is on your own hands, right? We have an example of that. Who can think way back in Genesis? Who can think of the example we have as somebody giving a warning? Like, it's about to go down, and they took it light. Like, eh, nah, it's all right. Lot's uh, sons-in-law. That's right. Lot's sons-in-law, right? His sons-in-law, you remember, Lot came to him, and he had told him, he was like, yo, yo, we got to go. And they were looking at it like, man, they looked at him like he was somebody who mocks. You know what I'm saying? 
looked at him like, man, ain't no big deal. Whole place got destroyed. Right? So at that point, their blood is on their hands. Lot did what he is supposed to do. Right? It's them that they was looking at it like they didn't take it serious. So their blood was on their own hands. Who back in that room? Tell Andre to come here and come here and sit down and turn the game off. Tell him I ain't gonna say it no more. Keep going. He heard the sound of the trumpet and did not take warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. Right. And when he, when it say his blood shall be upon him, what it's saying is it's his fault. Right. When you say your blood has been upon you, it's saying it's your fault. Right. And if somebody say if if my blood, if your blood is on my hands, that means it's my fault. If your blood is on your own hands, it means it's your own fault. Right. So that's what just whenever you hear that in the scripture, that's what it's talking about. Just kind of kind of think of the picture as, you know what I'm saying, catching somebody red handed in the mo like even the saying catching somebody red handed. What that saying is they have blood on their hands. You know what I'm saying? It's like I caught you red handed. So I caught you with blood on your hands. So what the, the saying would be, if it's somebody else's blood on your hands, then the implication would be that you killed somebody. Right. If it's your own blood on your hands, the implication would be that you killed yourself. OK, so he's saying his blood is on his own hands. Keep going. But he that takes warning shall deliver his soul. But if mm -hmm. the watchman see the sword come and does not blow the trumpet and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Mm -hmm. So thou, son of man. I have said thee as a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, thou shalt hear the word at my mouth and warn them from me. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou does not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at your hand. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way and turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity. But you have delivered your soul. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel. Thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how shall we then live? Say unto them, As I live, says Yahuwah God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, mm -hmm. thou son of man. Man, saying thy people actually go back, go back a little bit. He said, If our sin, go go back to that part where he said, If yeah, our yeah, sin, yeah. I might have missed something right here. Let's read it again. For mm -hmm. me. Yeah, we coming here to kind of see when when uh Ezekiel get the message, but I forgot this, you know, so I forgot about this part being in 33, verse 10. Therefore, oh, thou this son is of man, Ezekiel chapter the 33, verse 10. Sorry about that. Speaking to the house of Israel, thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us and we pine away in them, how shall we then live? Right. So now you have to take that. The most the most the most faithful of men of the law would have to ask this question. Anybody who ha puts their faith in the law has to ask this question. Read it one more time and let's try to understand what question they ask him. Thus you shall speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Right? So he they asking the question, if our sins stay on us, right? If our sins are on us, right, how in the world do we live? And you have to ask that question with the law because the law doesn't have any mechanism. To remove all sins right you might be able to sacrifice for some but there's no mechanism to remove all sins right if we look at the law hold, hold we got let's grab we're gonna come right back here but real quick let's grab deuteronomy chapter 27 give me verse i don't know the verse actually might be 27 too right deuteronomy chapter 27 give me like the you know third to the last verse Right. The the uh, the agreement that Yah made with us, the covenant that he made with us and with our fathers on Horeb, Mount Sinai. 
when he spoke, he spoke to them and they made the agreement. They binded them. They binded themselves into the agreement, but they didn't just bind themselves into the agreement. They also binded us, those that came from them. Right. If you remember what Moses spoke about, he said, I make this not only with those of you that are here, but also those that are not here. Right. So he made the agreement. We have the agreement and it was made to us. But at the same time, I mean, made to our fathers, but at the same time, it was also made to us. Right. And so now this is the agreement that we bind in. And now you're about to see our fathers bind ourselves into even another agreement as part of our law. Right. This is Deuteronomy chapter 27. Give me like the third to the last verse. Verse be he that smite his neighbor secretly and all the people shall say amen. Right. So he who smite his neighbor uh, secretly. Right. In other words, you hit your neighbor, or you kill your neighbor and you do it in secret. Don't nobody know about it. Books say it's cursed. Now, in that situation, you might not get caught. And there might not be a sacrifice. There is no sacrifice to come to. To, to cure murder, right? So in that case, you are cursed. Cursed, the, the word cursed means you're devoted to destruction. In other words, death, right? It's a permanent death, right? That's what's supposed to happen as a curse. You have to deal with death, right? So that's why our bodies have to die. And the Most High God has to re resurrect our bodies in the form of a spirit. He has to remake us by spirit. That's the only way this thing work out. Keep going. First be he that takes a reward to slay an innocent person. And all the people right? say, hey, if somebody If amen. somebody pay you a bounty to do what now? Slay an innocent person. Right? To kill an innocent person. And that's a curse. But watch what else. First be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. Right? The confirmeth not all the words. See, a lot of people think they got out when he say confirmeth. No, I confirm it. The word is right. Yah is good. The law is righteous. That's confirming it. But then he, he added a little bit more onto it. He said, confirmeth not all these words. What? Of this law to do them. To do them. Right? So that means every single word of this law. Did he say dietary law? No. Did he say moral law? No. Did he say feast day law? No. Did he say ceremonial law? No. That's it. It ain't no all. It, we don't have no whole bunch of laws. From Moses, we got one law that encapsulates the whole thing, right? And he tells you, curse is anybody who don't confirm it to do all the words of this law. And then he said, let the people say what? Amen. So if the people say, okay, now grab, uh, ooh, well, let's see, uh, let's see if my memory will serve me good. Exodus chapter 19, maybe Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1. That might not be right if it ain't. I ain't going to waste our time too much. My brain might not be, you know what I mean? Right, but if you look at it, he said, you got to confirm it and do it. And it got to be all the words of the law. That means there's nothing excluded. There is no exception. And I will tell you that anyone who thinks that Yahushua came and changed anything about what Moses said, they don't understand the law. Right. What Moses say stands. So if Moses say you curse, you are cursed. Ain't nothing you could do about that. What Yahushua say also stands. One don't negate the other. One don't override the other. If you think one conflicts with the other, you don't understand what's happening. Right. Two totally separate things. This is uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the congregation of the children of Israel, saying to them, You shall be holy, for I, Yahuwah, your God, am holy. Right? You so shall. he said, Yahuwah spoke to him. He said, Y'all going to be set apart because I'm set apart. Right? Keep going. Watch this. 
You shall fear every man his mother, his father, and keep my Sabbaths. Uh huh. Watch this. Turn ye not unto idols, nor make yourselves molten gods. I am Yahuwah. Okay. And if you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto Yahuwah, you shall offer it at your own will. It shall be eaten the same day offer it. And on the morrow, and if aught remain until the third day, it shall be burnt in fire. And it and if it be eaten at all on the third day, it is abominable. It shall not be accepted. Okay. Therefore, everyone that eateth it shall bear his iniquity, because he has profaned the hollow thing of the Lord. That, what verse is that? that this is eight. Eight. Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Um, try 18. Give me 18 verse five. You shall therefore keep my statutes, judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. Ah, that's what I'm looking for. Amen. Right. So he said, you shall keep my. Let's read it again. This is uh, Leviticus chapter 18, verse five. You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments with a, which a man which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am you. Right. If anybody look at Moses law, right? Some people, I was talking to a brother online. He was uncomfortable with me calling it Moses law. He was like, bro, that's not Moses law. That came from God. I was like, what you think God called it? You know what I'm saying? I ain't doing nothing but speaking as the oracles. Most high God called it the law of Moses. We can read Malachi. You open up Malachi, he say, remember my servant Moses. Who brought you the law of Moses? Right? I'm not making this stuff up. When Yahushua spoke about, he said, What did Moses tell you? We gonna count Yahushua as wrong about saying that? It said that way for a reason. A fool, only a fool would look at somebody saying it's Moses' law and look at it and not acknowledge that Yah gave Moses the law. You don't know the law. If you say, I'm not talking. When I'm speaking, I'm not speaking to the fools. Right. If we need to go back there, that's OK. Call me. We'll figure it out. I'll start you with square one. You know what I'm saying? We got a lot of video. You can go all the way back to the first in the beginning. That was the video call in the beginning. And you can just work your way all the way up from there. Sister Pam will help you. Right. Sister Danielle will help you. They all went back. Right. If we need if we need to go back there, that's fine. But that's not what we do. I'm not talking to the fool. Though. Only a fool will look at it. You say Moses law and they think Moses came up with it on his own. They think it's something separate from what God gave. But people have to be pr protective of that because they don't understand our law. They be thinking by saying it's Moses law. What they trying to make you think is they trying to think they trying to make you think that Yahushua is, is telling you and commanding you the same commandments that Moses gave you. And that's a lie. That's not true. That's not what the book say. You got to go leaps and bounds. You got to misinterpret and go leaps and bounds and assume and put all types of other stuff. And you're going to be contradicting for the rest of your life and making excuses and trying to act like you don't see stuff and telling people that Paul, you know what I'm saying? Not everything that Paul wrote to come from God, all types of, stuff. you know how much stuff you got to do to try to uphold that doctrine. You know how much corners you got to cut. Right. What I'm teaching, you ain't got to cut no corners. You look at the word exactly what it say. So let's look at it for what it say. I'm a believer of Moses law, the commandments, those that came from Mount Sinai from Yahuwah himself. I'm a believer of that, right? Me as a believer of that, it says, verse, uh, chapter 18, verse uh, five, what did it say? You shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahuwah. So if I keep the commandments of Yahuwah, the promise is I will live. If you live, you cannot die. He didn't say nothing about death. He said, if a person does these things, he will live. That got that, right? So if a man say, you know what? I want to live. What he got to do? If he a believer in this, in this law, you got to keep the commandments. But now let's put a pin in that one. Because I, if, if I believe chapter 18, if I, if I believe Leviticus 18, 5, then I also have to believe uh, Deuteronomy 27, verse what? 26. 26. This is Leviticus chapter 27, verse 26. If I believe 18, 5, I got to believe 27, 26. Watch this. Deuteronomy 27, 26. Mm-hmm. 
Cursed be he that confirmeth not all the words of this law to do them. And all the people shall say, Amen. So now, on one hand, if I do the law and I keep the commandments, I'll live. But on the other hand, the same law is telling me that if I don't confirm all the words to do them of this law, then I will be cursed. Anybody who truly understands the law and believes it has to deal with that. So they say, oh, you know what? I messed up. I sinned at some point. Right? That means there's a curse on me. The next question has to become, let's go all the way back to Ezekiel chapter 33, wherever we left off. And let's see what question they ask. Because that is the question that you have to ask after you sin. The law don't tell you nothing about, oh, you can sin, but if you do X, Y, and Z, it's good. You'll still live. No, it only tells you if you do the commandments, you'll live. And if you, if you don't confirm all of the words to do them, then you'll die. In other words, if you don't do, at any point, don't do the commandments, then you die. You're cursed. So if those are your options, if what's before you is life or death, and you make the decision to go down the path of death, and there's no opportunity, it don't give you anything to get you back to the, down the path of life, you got to ask this question that Brother T is about to read right out of Ezekiel chapter 33. What verse? 10. Verse 10. This is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 10. Watch what the book say. Therefore, O thou son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, thus ye speak, saying, If our transgressions and our sins be upon us, and we pine away in them, how should we then live? Right? They have to ask the question. I've chosen to be on the path of death. How in the world do I get back to the path of life? The law don't tell me how to do that. The law tell me, look, when I'm clean, the law tell me, look, if you stay clean, you live. But if you sin, you die. You are cursed. It don't tell you what to do if I sin and I'm on the path of curse. How do I get back to life? You can't find it. I challenge anybody to try to find it in the law. You won't find it. It'll tell you about sacrifices. It'll tell you about a whole bunch of stuff. It never tells you how to remove a curse. And if you don't have that answer, an honest person who reads the law, you know what they're going to say to themselves? How do, if my sin is on me, how do I live? What am I supposed to do? And that's the question that we're supposed to be asking. But we are such hypocrites and we try to come up with our own doctrine and we always try to teach the commandments of men as if they come from God. We got to come up with our own. We got we to come up with our own theories because we can't accept the way that the Most High God set it up. It's too scary for us to think, oh, wait, there is another way. We let these people tell us lies about Oh, it's a renewed covenant. Stop. It's lying. Just say you don't understand the book. It's okay. If you say you don't understand, the most high God will give you the understanding. It's only when you lie and you pretend like you understand and you don't. Now you get caught up in what you do understand. You lose. You lose what you used to understand and you, you fall away. And you teaching people lies and sending them to hell. Teach these people the truth. The book say what it say. I ain't making nothing up. The people ask the question they sell. They say if the, if the sin is on us, then what are we supposed to do? If the sin is on us, what am I supposed to do at this point? How do we get back to life is the question. Let's see. Keep going. <sighs> and say, unto you them, I, say unto them, as I live, says you, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Therefore, so now, in Ezekiel chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 33, and a little bit in Ezekiel 3, he gave us the instruction. He told us, although our law didn't provide a way, right? The law didn't provide a way for us to get back to life. Thank you. The, the law didn't provide a way for us to get back to life, right? What the law provided us is just a roadmap. If you sin, you die, period, right? And if you don't sin, if you keep the commandments, you live. It didn't tell you nothing about 
if I end up on the path to death, how do I get back to the path of life? That's not provided in the law. It don't provide it. So now that people are asking that question, if our sin is on us, y'all, what do we do? Y'all tell them, man, I ain't, I ain't interested in y'all dying. Just turn from your sin. That's new. When Ezekiel said that, that is new. We have not heard that before. That's not something that, that's been given to us at that point. So now all the prophets got to look and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now y'all said it, but whoa, whoa, whoa. How, did, how does this play out? Yahushua is how he made this happen. At this point, we don't know nothing about Yahushua. All we know is the man said, if you turn from your iniquity, you will live. Right? That's what he gave to us. You out of here? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Y'all be safe. Thank you. Be careful now. Right? But uh, he, he don't give us a way to, he don't give us the mechanism for how we live because the law, as far as we understood it, didn't prescribe it. Now, it really did prescribe it when you, when you really look deep into the law. But nobody would know that without Yahushua being revealed. Right? So now he look at, he telling them, he look, man, just turn away from your iniquity and you will live. That's new for us. We never, we didn't hear nothing. The law don't tell us nothing about if you repent from all your sins, you will live. That's not what the law told us. The law told us, make a sacrifice and a curse going to be on you. Period. That got that. And if you don't sin, then you could, uh, you know what I'm saying? You you going to live. Keep going. Watch this. Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall be delivered. Shall, shall, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Right. Just because, in other words, just because you lived a righteous life, if you turn from that righteousness and sin, all your righteousness is not going to deliver you in the day that you, you decide to sin. Once you sin, that righteousness is not going to save you. That's important to know. It's important to know. It's not like, it's not like Yahushua would tell you, he say, store up riches in the kingdom, right? In heaven is what he said. He say, store up riches in the kingdom. The way you do that is not by righteousness, right? And then turn into sin. When you storing up the, that right, you, it's not like you storing it up and then you turn to sin. It's like, okay, well, I did enough. So it paid for that little sin that I'm committed. It don't work like that. When you storing up that righteousness and you storing up that treasure and you commit a sin, you lost all of it. That's not how it works. Your righteousness has never and will never pay for your sin. That's not how it's made. That's not how it's, the only way to pay for sin is through death. Every one of us will pay for our own sin. And when we pay for it, we going to die. Right? That's why Yahushua died. As a payment for our sin. He took on a penalty that only we deserve. Right? That gave him the authority because he followed uh, Leviticus 18.5. Leviticus 18.5 say if you follow uh, the statutes and the judgments, you will live. Right? So that was his. He didn't sin. He confirmed it. He did everything. Right? So that, that, that's the reason why when he died, they, most high God had to raise him back up. He didn't have a choice. A lot of people look at it like it was a choice. Like the most high God is just, no, 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 no. Most high God has to uphold his promise to the law. He can't return void. So if the promise was you do this, you're going to live. How somebody going to kill you? Okay, well, I owe you life. Get back up. Third day, get your butt back up. And that's why Yahushua lives. But by taking the penalty of death because he wasn't supposed to take that in the first place, he wasn't supposed to ever die in the first place because he took that penalty. Now he owns everything. The Most High God gave him everything because he paid a penalty that he wasn't supposed to pay. And this is how Yahushua can tell us, turn from sin, turn from these sins specifically. And if you do this, you won't be defiled. He tells us specifically, these are specifically the sins that will not enter into the kingdom. Where can we read about those? Mark 7, right? We can read about them in 1 Corinthians 6. We can read about them in Ephesians 5, right? We can read about, got, read about them in Galatians 5, and we can read about them 
in uh, Revelations 22. Those are five places that the book is very clear about what will not enter the kingdom or that what is outside of the kingdom or what defiles a man in his heart. Those are the things that we cannot enter into the kingdom. And they don't say nothing about no Sabbath, right? In all those places, you won't read one time it's talking to you about a Sabbath or a feast day or a sacrifice or many of the other laws that Moses commanded us. And that's not to belittle anything that Moses told us. But Moses gave, gave us a commandment for our bodies to live. Yahushua is giving us a commandment for our soul to live forever. And if you don't recognize the difference in that promise, then you don't understand the law. Right? What, what Ezekiel is telling us, uh, we didn't know it at the time, but when we look back in hindsight, what Ezekiel is telling us right now is the gospel. Ezekiel is preaching the gospel right now. Right? He said, repent and live. What's the first thing that John the Baptist said? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Y'all sure. He popped on the scene. What did he say? Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. It was always about repentance. So. That's what Ezekiel is talking about. Sister Pamela is asking what were sacrifices for, right? Huh? So, so we're talking about how the like there was no way to remove a curse in the law, right? Mm -hmm. It didn't tell you how to gain life after you sin. So, so she was saying, what is the sacrifices for? The sacrifices, the sacrifice is the same thing that Yahushua did. So when you sacrifice a lamb, so so when you look at when you look at uh, when you look at the law. Any sin of the law requires death, right? No matter how small you think it is or large you think it is, every one of them required death, right? So now what the Most High God did is he said, well, there are certain sins that I'll allow you to instead of you dying right now, I'll allow you to give me an animal instead and we'll sacrifice that animal for that sin, right? Then you also had peace offerings. You had, you had uh, certain uh, sacrifices that had nothing to do with sin. But just talking about the ones that had to do with sin, right? You can sacrifice this animal for certain sins, but not for all. Right? So now this, you're supposed to die. Nothing changes about you. You're supposed to die. Right? That's why every year, right, the high priest had to go in and he did on the day of atonement. He had to atone for everyone every year. It's not like there was going to be a year and he say, Oh, well, everybody already did their sacrifices this year. No matter what, the priest has to atone for everybody every year. And that's to cover any sins that might have been missed for anybody who didn't do it. Anybody who didn't bring they, 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 uh, they bullock to the, uh, to the temple, he had to cover them. He had to atone across the board, right? But guess what? How many times he had to do that? Yeah. Every Whoa. single year. So it doesn't really take away the fact that you're supposed to die. And even after you get that sacrifice, one day, guess what happens to everybody? They still die. Right? So the sacrifices were just a placeholder to keep you where you are able to serve the Most High God in the uh, temple or in the tabernacle. At that time, in the tabernacle and later on in the temple. But at no point will you read anything, right? What we do, we don't guess, right? We're not guessing. We're not making no assumptions. We only take what the scriptures say. The scripture at no point will you ever read that, hey, take this sacrifice. It will remove the curse. Right? That's not what, that's not what it was there for. The only reason he put the sacrifice is because technically your butt should have been, you, you, your butt should have died when you stole something. Your butt should have died when you, uh, you know what I'm saying? When you, uh, what's, what's another one? Uh, when you stole something, if you, I don't know, like cursed your, like not cursed your neighbor, but like, I guess like probably fought with you or struck your neighbor or something like that. Yeah, you strike That's, your neighbor. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Your animal, you know what I'm saying? Does damage to your, your neighbor's animal. Any of that stuff. All those things are sins. All those are things that you, something that technically you're supposed to die for. But most high God provided a way and he said, okay, well, instead of you dying for those, I'm gonna give you a uh, I'm gonna give you a sacrifice for those. 
But then there's other sins that there's no sacrifice for, right? If you right. murder, right? If you break the Sabbath, if you do a, a number of all these things, there is no sacrifice for that. There's nothing in the scripture that you can say, oh, I'm going to do a sacrifice that way I can come back now. Then there's certain, there certain where he don't command you to be killed, but he also tell you that you cut off from your people. So you got to lead a camp. Mm -hmm. And there's no coming back from that. Right? So there are certain things that there is no recourse. Right? There's nothing that you could do to kind of get back from it. Nevertheless, whether it's a sacrifice for it or not, there's a different place. We just read it, right? 20, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 27. After we got done with all the sacrifices, we talked about all the sacrifices. After we talked about that, the book said, if you don't confirm all these words, you're cursed. So now, separate and above to whatever the sacrifice do, he put that on top of it and said, you're cursed. There is nothing in the scripture to say that you can remove the curse. What is a curse? Curse means devoted to destruction. So we only looking at the words of the scripture. If it say devoted to destruction and we believe it, it's different. If we if we look at the word and we say we believe it, then we have to take that. And we have to say, OK, you don't confirm all of it. You curse. Anything else is an assumption. If I think, oh, well, I can make I broke the Sabbath. I should be able to make a, a sacrifice to remove the curse. If I say that and I can't find a scripture to prove it, then I'm making an assumption. That's that's me talking. That's not book. Right. These people that tell you it's a renewed covenant, they can't prove that. That's 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 not book. If somebody tell you, you got to keep if they somebody tell you, if you don't keep the Sabbath, you go into hell. Nobody can prove that in this book. Not one person. You won't find one. Per I can tell you the stuff exactly, exactly the stuff that's going to put you outside of the kingdom. I can take you right to it and it'll say exactly that. No guesswork. No manipulation. No voodoo. We take you right to it and it say exactly that. These are the things that do not enter into the kingdom. These are the things that defile a man from his heart. Right. In Revelation, these are the things that the dogs are outside. Exactly what it say. No guessing. I ain't got to I ain't got to manipulate. I ain't got to take you a whole bunch of places. I can tell you exactly what it say. And I can also show you that when y'all should say himself that it's going to be people that break even the least of the commandments, right? And teach people to break them and they still get in the kingdom. There's no way that Moses and Yahushua is talking about the same covenant. That don't make sense. Right? It just don't make sense. That's not what Yahushua is calling. You calling Yahushua a liar if we do that. <laughs> right? So that's what we look at we look at what Ezekiel is telling us is the gospel. He's telling us the people are asking that question. People are asking the logical question that anybody should ask when they believe the law. A lot of the problem is people don't really believe the law. Remember, that was y'all. Yeah. When we get to the gospel, you're going to see that was Yahushua's charge. He told the people, if you believed Moses, you would believe me. So people were walking around thinking that they understood the law and they believed it, but they didn't. Because how do you believe something that you don't understand? Right? So they walking around thinking they understand it when they don't. And they believe what they understand, which is a misunderstanding. So they walking around thinking, oh, okay, well, Moses wants us to do that. Moses wants us to do this. Y'all, she was like, man, if you believe Moses, you would believe me. But because you don't believe Moses, you don't believe me. Yahushua. And it's the exact same thing happening today. Because people do not believe Yahushua, really they don't believe Moses either. But they call themselves law keepers. Right? And by doing that, they make the mistake because they're telling themselves that they see. And the whole time, the, mo the Most High is making them blind. Right? These people that are in Ezekiel 33, they are admitting that they cannot see. They're saying, they're asking the question, if our sin is on us, how then shall we live? Right? Any, why would they ask that question if they could just go make a sacrifice? If it was already known, all you got to do is make a sacrifice. You'll be good. You should live. If that was already known, why in the world would they be asking that question? They wouldn't. They're asking that question because it was known. I understand what the law say, 
So what am I supposed to do? If you telling me, if you reinforcing to me that my sin is on me, if I do this, my sin is on me. If I get warned, my sin is on me. Then how in the world do I get off of this sin? Well, Ezekiel telling them, man, you who ain't got no, you know what I'm saying? He ain't worried about you. You know what I'm saying? He ain't trying to make you die. Read it again. Verse 11. This is Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 11. As I live, says you who are God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Therefore, thou son of man, say unto the children of thy people, the righteousness of the righteous shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall thereby in the day that he turns from his wickedness. Neither shall the righteous be able to deliver for his righteousness in the day that he sins. Mm -hmm. When I shall so say it's to not our righteousness that's going that's going to get us right. It ain't going to be the righteousness that you previously did. That's going to keep you. If you did a whole lot of righteousness and then you sin that got that. Only thing most I got looking at is that last sin you committed. All right, keep going. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trusts to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousness shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, mm -hmm. when I say unto the wicked, you shall surely die. If he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, if the wicked restored the pledge, give again that he had robbed, walk in the statues of life, Without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not who, die. Who did that? Uh, um, uh, was it? Uh, was it? It wasn't Ahab. It was uh, um, my man name. I know Manasseh did it. Who? I think Manasseh did it, right? The king. Manasseh. Was it Manasseh or the one before him? It was Manasseh. He was wild. Remember? And then he went to jail in uh, Assyria or Babylon. Then he came back. And he repented. Uh, well, let's read it again, though. Right, read it, read it one more time. Let's see, let's see if we can think of who who did. He said, uh, Most High God said, "If I say to him, you shall surely die." Right, read that one. When I say to the oh wait, sorry. again, when I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right. If the wicked restore the pledge and give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live and shall not die. Right. Hold, hold, hold. We got grabbed uh, Genesis chapter 26. Start at verse one. It's Genesis chapter 26, verse one. Talk about like a Bimelech or something? Mm-hmm. This is Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. There was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land that I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee, for unto thee and unto thy seed I will give these countries, and will perform the oath which I swear to Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and will give thy seed to these countries. Thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments and statutes and my laws. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place... Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong one. Give me verse 20. I mean, chapter 20. Yeah, that's Isaac. It ain't going to be Isaac. It got to be Abraham. Uh, give me uh, Genesis chapter 20. Give me verse 1. And Abraham journeyed from there toward the south country and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and sojourned in Gerar. Abraham said unto Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech. He did what? And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. Right. So he took a man's wife, but he thought it was his sister. Right? But he took a man's wife. Keep going. Watch this. And said to him, Behold, you are He appeared to him how? He appeared to Abimelech in a dream by night. So in a dream by night, he appeared to Abimelech, and then he did what? 
He said unto him, Behold, you are but a dead man. He said what? You, have taken, you are but a dead man. So now in Ezekiel, when he asked the question, he said, If I say to the wicked, you shall surely die. He said, but then he then turns from his sin and he restores the pledge and restore what he took. Watch what happened after this. He said, you shall sure. He said, you are but a dead man. What else? For the woman which you have taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, without slay also a righteous nation. Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she even herself said, he is my brother. In the mm -hmm. integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, yes, I know that thou did this in the integrity of your heart, of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore, suffered I thee not to touch him. Mm -hmm. now, now watch this. Watch what he tell him. Now, therefore, restore the man his wife. For he, he said, do what now? Prophet. Restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet. He shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live. If thou restore thou her Thou shalt not, do what? Thou shalt live. This has always been the case. If you turn from it, you will live. However, that is not what the law describes. The Most High God can do that because the Most High God knows that he's going to redeem any, anyone who repented from sin. He's going to redeem them through Yahushua. Whether they are a Gentile, like Abimelech is, or whether they are a Hebrew, like our ancestors are. He knows that he's going to redeem all of them through Yahushua. But we didn't know that. That's why we asked the question, if you keep reminding us that our sin is on us, how then are we supposed to live? What are we supposed to do? I know the law say I'm cursed if I sin and you keep reminding me that my sin is on me. So then what am I supposed to do? How do I get back to the living? And he said, all you got to do is repent. He said, if I say to the wicked, let's go back to 33. He said, if I say to the wicked, right, that you shall surely die, but he turned from his wickedness and he restored a pledge. He give back what was taken then he'll live. That's exactly what Abimelech did, right? Keep going. If the wicked restore the pledge and give again that he had robbed, walk in the statutes of life without committed iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins that he has committed shall be mentioned unto him. He that has done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. Yet the children of thy people say the way of Yahuwah is not equal. But as for them, their way is not equal. Right, when he say equal, he's talking about fair. Right, so he's saying people talking about the way of Yahuwah ain't fair. Right, because you might look at it if you look at the law and it say, uh, you do everything in the law, you can live. You don't do everything in the law, you you curse. Right, if that's how you look at it, and you look at it and you believe that, then you'll be looking at that like, man, I mess up one little time and there ain't nothing that I can do. You trying to tell me you're not giving me no way out? You will look at that like it's not fair. But you was like, no, 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 just repent. You trying to say my way ain't fair? Just repent. You will live. Right? Keep going. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commit iniquity, he shall even die thereby. But if the wicked turn from his wickedness and do that which is lawful and right, he shall live thereby. Yet ye say the way of Yahuwah is not equal. O ye house of Israel, I will judge you. Everyone after his ways. Everyone after his heart. After his ways. Everyone after what he think. Well, Everyone after his consciousness. Like what his conscience say. Everyone after. Everyone after. Everyone after how 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 well they do their best. That's what they like to tell you. I mean, just just try your hardest. Just do your best. That's all you can do. Right. That's not what he's judging you off of. He said, whatever the actual result is, right? After, after your own ways is how he's going to judge you. So we need to understand what do my ways need to look like for me to get into the kingdom? That's the one question that we all have to ask. And at the end of the day, Solomon told us, he said, the whole duty of man is to keep the commandments. Right? And when Moses came down, what were the commandments? Exactly what Moses taught us. One of Moses' commandments was look forward to another man. 
He's going to be just like me. And he's going to come with words that come directly from the Most High God. And the words that the Most High God put in his mouth, that will be required. And that man is Yahushua. So now that Yahushua is on the scene, what's the commandment of God? Whatever Yahushua teaching. Before Moses, what was the commandment of God? Whatever Noah said. Before Noah, what was the commandment of God? Whatever Adam said. Right? Before Moses, it was whatever Abraham said. You understand? Whoever the, whoever the man of God, the most high God, give the instruction to, that's the commandment of God. When we was in the uh, when we was in the wilderness, right, walking through the desert, the commandment of the Most High God was, "You bet not kill or try to sacrifice on your own anything of the flock." So if you had a nice little sheep and you wanted to have some sheep dinner, you want to have some lamb chops. You had a nice little lamb and you want to have some lamb chops tonight. Most High God said, "You bet not kill that animal. You better take it to the priest. You got to sacrifice it." You got to sacrifice it and you got to sacrifice it to the priest, right? That was law for us. That was the commandment of Yah. But guess what? In Deuteronomy, he said, yo, y'all about to go over there. We're going to change that commandment. Now the commandment is, if you have some of the flock, go ahead and kill it. You don't have to bring it to the priest no more. Right? Did the Most High God contradict itself? No. He gave a man of God a new commandment. Moses told us that we was going to have somebody with new words from Yahuwah. He didn't use the word new, right? But he told us that you would have somebody who will bring words and whatever comes out of his mouth will be required. And if you study everything that came out of Yahushua's mouth, that is where you have your answer of what's required of you. No assumptions, right? No commandments of men. Just take it as what it say. You do that. It's I know it's it's the simplest things that seem the most difficult for us, right? It was just like uh, what was his name, Naaman? Yeah, right. Remember Naaman? He told Naaman. You remember uh, you remember uh, Elisha? So Naaman, he said, "Man, all you gotta do is go dip in the uh, Jordan." Didn't he tell him seven times? Go dip in the Jordan seven times. You do that, your leprosy will be healed. Naaman was looking at him in the Jordan because the Jordan wasn't nothing special. You nasty boy. Stop digging up under your arm. Right? He, you know what I'm saying? He, the, the, the Jordan ain't nothing special. Right? He's looking at the Jordan like, think of the Jordan like Lake Mead. You know what I'm saying? Like, ooh, what you dip in the Lake Mead seven times? From y'all that, that's not here in Vegas, you know what I'm saying? Lake Mead is like this man made, nasty river. The Jordan wasn't man made, of course, but it wasn't nothing special. Like, you know what I'm saying? Naaman was looking like, it's all these great rivers all over the place. If you would have told me to dump into one of these great rivers, maybe I can understand. But in the dirty Jordan River, you want me to go and dip into that? That don't make sense. But his servant had to tell him, Master, had he told you to go do some great thing, if he told you stand on your head for seven seconds while touching your nose with your other hand, you know what I'm saying? You would have done it and you would have happily done it. But because he told you something simple, you, you don't believe. Right? What I'm teaching is simple. You know how simple it is? Just take the book for what it say. Don't make no assumptions. What it say is what it is. Right? It's simple. When the man tell you repent from your sin and you will live, that got that. Keep reading. Watch this. And it came to pass in the 12th year of our captivity, in the 10th month, and the fifth day of the month that the one had the one that had escaped out of the Jerusalem came unto me saying, the city is smitten. He said one escaped out of Jerusalem and he said the city is smitten. In other words, they smacked our city. Right. Keep going. Watch this. So this is the 12th come over year. Here, sit down. Stop playing. This is the 12th year of Ezekiel's captivity which would have been the 11th year of Zedekiah's reign, because Zedekiah reigned for 11 years, and then he got killed by Babylon, which means that Ezekiel in these, in Ezekiel and uh, his brethren that were captive in Babylon, they were there for a year before Zedekiah became king. So they've been in Babylon for a while. So all of the time that Jeremiah was going through, what he was going through, King Zedekiah, you know, fighting against Babylon, 
all of that lasted uh, quite a while. So kind of give you a little timeline there. Now the hand of the of Yahuwah was upon me in the evening before he had before he that escaped came, and he opened my mouth until he came to me in the morning, and the mouth and my mouth was open. And he I said, was my no mouth was down. what? Open. Now he can talk. You remember he couldn't talk before. So now he's able to talk. Right? Keep going. And the word of Yahuwah came unto me saying, Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel speak saying, Abraham was one and he inherited the land. But we are many. The land is given to us for inheritance. Wherefore say unto them, Thus says Yahuwah God, ye eat with the blood and lift up your eyes toward your idols and shed blood and shall ye yeah. possess the land? Ye stand upon your sword, ye work abomination and ye defile everyone his neighbor's wife and ye shall possess the land? Mm -hmm. say, say thou thus unto them. Thus says Yahuwah God, as I live, surely they that are in the wastes shall fall by the sword and him that is in the open field will I give to the beasts to, the, to be devoured. And they that be in the forts and in the caves shall die of pestilence. For I will lay a I will lay the land most desolate, and the pomp of their of her strength shall cease. The mountains of Israel shall be desolate, that none shall pass through. Then shall they know that I am Yahuwah, when I have led the land, when I have laid the land most desolate, because of all their abominations which they have committed. Also, thou son of man, <clears throat> the children of thy people are still talking against thee by the walls and then the doors of the houses and speak one to another. Everyone is brother saying, come, I pray you and hear what is the word that comes forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee as the people come and they sit right, before said, thee. Look, he said, Ezekiel, I'm going to tell you something. These people chatter. They run around. They ask, they, they're like, yeah, let's, let's go see what the most high God got to say. And he say, Ezekiel, they come unto you as the people come. You know what I'm saying? They come unto you like they regular people right watch this and they come unto thee as the people come and they sit before thee as my people and they hear thy words but they will not do them <laughs> right he we... said they sit right in front of you ezekiel they come to you just like the people come they sit right in front of you as if they my people as if they serve me and they gonna hear everything you saying but guess what they not gonna do what you say watch what else for with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goes after their covetousness. Right? He said, with their mouth, they saying, praise Yahuwah. Hallelujah. Right? They saying, this is great. I love what's being taught. This is a righteous man. Brother, you teach it correctly. You got the word of God. That's what they telling Ezekiel. Right? <clears throat> but he said, but they heart. Goes for what? Goes after their covetousness. Lust of many things, all types of stuff. Watch this. Keep going. And lo, thou art unto them as a very lovely song of one that has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear he thy said, word. you're entertaining to them. Right? He said, look, Ezekiel, don't you know these people come and when they come, they come as if they the people. They come as if they my people. They're going to sit in front of you and they're going to hear what you say, but they're they, they not going to do it. Matter of fact, when you look at it, you like to them somebody who sing a song. You, you entertain it. Like, man, he has a beautiful voice. I love listening to Ezekiel. Right? He said, you like somebody who sing a song, but watch this. They hear thy words, but they do them not. And when, he, when this comes to pass, lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. One day, one day, we're going to realize and we're going to look at this book and we're going to say, this stuff is real. A lot of people play around with it. A lot of people listen to what we're talking, listen to how we're teaching, and they look at it and they take it for granted. And they look at it and they like, oh, yeah, Phil, it's funny sometimes and all this different stuff. But the book is being taught. And you are never going to get this book. You never going to understand this book until you put it into practice. All the rest of this theoretical stuff like, OK, well, what if this and what if that? You never going to understand a lick of it until you put it in practice. And as you put it in practice, 
with patience, right? Now the word will start opening up to you. A lot of these people have no intentions on understanding it, right? No intentions on truly uh, submitting to the word. They only going after their own lust. And that can't drive us. What we want out of life and what we want in this flesh cannot drive how we interpret the word. Just because I want a better job, I can't try to reinterpret the word to fit what I want in a better job. <clears throat> that's dangerous. But that's what we do. Right? Just because I hate Christians, I can't try to reinterpret the word and say, you know what? It's a renewed covenant. It ain't no new covenant. That's dangerous. That's wrong. It's a lie. Just because I don't like Christians, I can't say, oh, you know what? It ain't no Trinity. Therefore, Yahushua ain't God. That's wrong. That's dangerous. What I have to say, no matter what, is I have to speak according to the oracles of Yah. That's it. That's our job. We need to find a scripture, say exactly what that scripture say, and move on. The rest of this stuff is funny, buddy. The rest of this stuff is us just making stuff up, which is dangerous and it's wrong. Every day, these people are being confused, and there's people who otherwise might accept what Yahuwah has for them. But they are being confused by everybody bickering, and everybody disagreeing, and everybody, and this how I supposed to be. I get it and I understand. But woe unto the man that that offense comes by. Right? The offense has to come. People have to lie. People have to teach stuff wrong. People have to be a stumbling block. People That has to happen. Right? But man, don't let it happen through you. There's always going to be a Moses and there's always going to be a Pharaoh. There's always going to be somebody who 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 is is used as a vessel for the most high God to show us the power. There's always going to be another person who's used as a vessel to show his power through. We just have to choose which one we want to be. And that requires action. You can't sit by idly. You can't sit here passively. Like this stuff can't be passive for us. It can't be something that's just like, oh, we just let, we can't let God happen to us. You understand? We have to actively look for opportunities to say, you know what? This is who I am and this is who I'm going to be. And it's slow sometimes. Not all the time, but sometimes it's slow. It's one action at a time. You start off with one thing, then you go to the next thing, then you go to the next thing. But that's how it clicks. That's how you get an understanding. Through obedience. Through submission. If you don't have that, you don't have anything. It's going to be a hard, it's going to be a hard one. And this stuff. This stuff is going, it's not going to make sense. And it's not that it's really not, not going to make sense, but Satan ain't going to let it make sense to you. They can't do nothing with nobody who obey, who dedicated to the most high God. What are you going to do? And I don't say that just because I say it. I say that because the word said it. What are you going to do to somebody who obey the most high God? All you can do is tempt. All we got to do is, you know what I'm saying, get around that. The most high God told us we can so if the Most High God told us we can get through the temptation, and that's all Satan can do to us is tempt. Then guess what? He can't do nothing. He can't do nothing we don't let him do. Keep going. Let's see. That was uh, the end of the chapter. That was the end of it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so our temple is gone. The man came and told Ezekiel and told him, like, listen, you know what I'm saying? Our city is smitten. You know what I'm saying? Our stuff gone. So after that, Ezekiel, he can talk now. And the Most High God told him, like, yo, this is going to be your relationship with the people. They're going to come to you, and they're going to come to you as if they the people, as if they my people. And they're going to hear what you said, but they ain't going to do it. Matter of fact, it's going to be like you singing a song. You tap dancing for them. They think you entertain it. They come, they keep coming, but they only come because they like, you know what I'm saying? They, they kind of like how you do it, but not because they're going to do anything that you say. 
So now Ezekiel have to keep that in mind. He still got to he still got to deliver it the exact exactly the same way that the Most High God gave it to him, right? But at this point, our city was smitten. So our people, including Ezekiel, are sad about it. Grab uh, Lamentation chapter one. Lamentation. The word lamentation means like uh like mourning. Right? It's like it's kind of like crying or complaining about something. Right? When you lament or you lament uh, lamentation, a lamentation is, is crying about it or complaining about something. Right? So now uh Jeremiah, they say Jeremiah wrote this one. Right? So Jeremiah, on top of what we already read out of the book of Jeremiah, um, we also about to read a book that's that's uh said to be written by him called Lamentations. This is Lamentations chapter one, verse one. He saw the whole thing. Hmm. I said he saw the whole thing. Oh yeah. Remember, yeah, because he was there. Remember, he wanted to leave, but the captain of the guard he caught he caught him. He said, "Uh, no, nah, where you going? You about to fall to Babylon? Took his butt back and put him in jail." Yeah, like Brother T said, he he ended up having to witness the entire thing, but it's a reason for that. How does the city sit solitary that was full of people? How has she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princes among the provinces. How has she become tributary? She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers, she has none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwells among the heathen. She finds no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. The ways of Zion do mourn because none come to the solemn feasts. All her gates are desolate. Now. Her priests sigh. Her virgins are afflicted and she is in bitterness. Her adversaries are the chief. Her enemies prosper, for Yahuwah has afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. And from the daughter of Zion, all her beauty is departed. The princes are become like hearts that find no pleasure, and they are gone without strength before the pursuer. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries, all her pleasant things that she had in the days of old, when her people fell into the hand of the enemy, and none did help her. The he said, none her. did help her, right? So he's talking about our people. We were being terrorized by, the, uh, by Nebuchadnezzar and all the armies, and nobody helped us. Remember, you had Ammon, Edom, um, Syria. All of them were fighting for Nebuchadnezzar to kill us, right? None of them stopped and was like, man, we shouldn't be doing this. It's the people of Yahuwah. Right? Nobody helped us. Watch this. Keep going. The adversary saw her and did mock her. It mocked, did mock at her Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem has grievously sinned. Therefore, she is removed. All that honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sighs and turned backwards. Her filthiness is in her skirts. She remembered not her last end. Therefore, she came down wonderfully. She had no comforter. O oh Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy has magnified himself the adversary has spread out his hand upon all her pleasant things for she has seen that the heathen entered into her sanctuary whom thou did command that they should not enter into thy congregation all her people sigh they seek bread they have given their pleasant things for meat to relieve the soul see O lord and consider for i am become vile is it nothing to you all ye that pass by, behold, and see if there be any sorrow like unto my sorrow, which is done unto me, wherewith the Lord has afflicted me in the day of his fierce anger. From above has he sent fire into my bones, and it prevails against them. He has spread a net for my feet and has turned me back. He has made me desolate and faint all the day. The yoke of my transgression is bound by his hand. They are wreathed and come up unto my neck. He has made my strength to fall. The Lord has delivered me into their hands, from whom I am not able to rise up. The Lord has trodden underfoot all the mighty men in the midst of me. He has called an assembly against me to crush my young men. 
The Lord has tried in the virgin, the daughter of Judah, as a wine, as in a wine press. For these things I weep. My eye, my eye runneth down with water because of the comforter that should relieve my soul is far from me. My children are desolate because the enemy prevailed. Zion spreads forth her hands, and there is none to comfort her. The Lord has commanded concerning Jacob that his adversary should be round about them. Jerusalem is as a is as a menstruous woman among them. The Lord is righteous, for I have rebelled against his commandment. Here I pray you, all people, and behold my sorrow. My virgins and my young men are gone into captivity. I call for my lovers, but they de de deceived me. My priests, my elders gave up the ghosts in the city while they sought their meat to relieve their souls. Behold, O Lord, for I am in distress. My bowels are troubled. My heart is turned within me, for I grieve. I grievously rebelled abroad the sword. Bereaved abroad the sword, bereaved at home there is as death. They have heard that I sigh. There is none to comfort me. All my enemies have heard of my trouble. They are glad that thou hast done it. Thou they, are what? Bring, they are glad that thou hast done it. Right? They are happy that this has happened. Right? I want to I want to keep harping on how the enemies around us feel. Right. So the, a lot of the people that's around us, they were happy that this happened to us. Right. That's going to be very important. They are happy that these things happen to us. Keep going. That will bring the day that thou hast called and they shall be like unto me. Let all their wickedness come before thee and do unto them as thou hast done unto me for all my transgressions. For my sighs are many and my heart is faint. That's the end of it. That's the end of the first chapter. Keep going. How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud in his anger and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. The Lord has swallowed up all the inhabitations of Jacob and has not pitied. He has thrown down in his wrath the strongholds of the daughter of Judah he has brought them down to the ground. He has polluted the kingdom and the princes thereof. He has cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He has drawn back his right hand from before the enemy and burned against Jacob like a flaming fire, which devours round about. He has bent his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all them that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion, poured out his fury like fire. The Lord was an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up her palaces. He has destroyed her, his strongholds and has increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. And he that he has violently taken away his tabernacle as if it were a garden. He has, he he has done what? Violently taken away his tabernacle. Violently taken away the tabernacle. In other words, he took away the temple violent with violence. Right. This is this is Jeremiah uh, explaining how these things happen and what happened in the land. I want us to read it so we can understand how our people feel about this. Keep going. As if it were of a garden, he has destroyed his places of the assembly. The Lord has caused the solemn feasts and Sabbaths to be for, forgotten in Zion and has despised in the indignation of his anger, the king and the priest. The Lord has cast off his altar. He has abhorred his sanctuary. He has given up into the hand of the enemy, the walls of her palaces. They have made a noise in the house of the Lord as in the day of a solemn feast. The Lord has purposed to destroy the wall of the daughter of Zion. He has stretched out a line. He has not withdrawn his hand from destroying. Therefore, he had made the rampart and the wall to lament. They languished together. Her gates are sunk into the ground. He has destroyed and broken her bars. Her king and her princes are among the Gentiles. The law is no more. Her prophets also find no vision from the Lord. The elders of the daughter of Zion sit upon the ground and keep silence. They have cast up dust upon their heads. They have girded themselves with sackcloth. The virgins of Jerusalem hang down their heads to the ground. My eyes do fail with tears. My bowels are troubled. My liver is poured upon the earth for the destruction of the daughter of my people because the children of the sucklings swoon in the streets of the city. They say to their mothers, where is corn and wine? When they swooned as the wounded in the streets in the city, when their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. What thing shall I take to witness for thee? 
What thing shall I liken unto thee, O daughter of Jerusalem? What shall I equal to thee, that I may comfort thee, O virgin daughter of Zion? For thy breach is great like the sea. Who can heal thee? Thy prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. All that pass by clap their hands at thee. They hiss and wag their head at the daughter of Jerusalem, saying, Is this the city that men call the perfection of beauty, the joy of the whole earth? All thine enemies have opened their mouths against thee. They hiss and gnash the teeth. They say we have swallowed her up. Certainly this is the day that we looked for. We have found, we have seen it. The Lord has done that which he has devised. He has fulfilled his word that he had commanded in the days of old. He has thrown down and has not pitied and has caused thine enemy to rejoice over thee. He has set up the horn to thine adversaries. Their heart cried unto the Lord, the wall of the daughter of Zion. Let tears run down like a river, like a river day and night. Give thyself no rest. Let not the apple of thine eye cease. Arise, cry out in the night. In the beginning of the watches, pour out thine heart like water for the face of the Lord. Lift up thine hands toward him for the life of thy young children that faint for hunger in the top of every street. Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall women eat their fruit and children a, a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? The young and the old lie on the ground of the streets. My virgins and my young men are fallen by the sword. Thou hast slain them in the day of thine anger. Thou hast killed and is not pity. Thou hast called as in a solemn day my terrors round about, so that in the day of the Lord's anger none escape nor remain. Those that I have swaddled and brought up have mine enemy consumed. All right, well, that's, that's the end of two. Chapter three, one, two, one, two, three. Huh? Want to do three? No, we can do three next week. All right, we'll do three through five. It should be five chapters. We're going to do three through five next week. Um, but this is, this is, this is the, the emotion, right, that Jeremiah is kind of expressing. It's the emotion of the people and how he felt that the nations felt about us. But you'll see he keeps talking about how the people around us didn't care. In fact, they were happy that this stuff happened to us. That's important to know about some of the things that are about to happen next. Right. So it's important to know about how we are going to feel about other nations. Right. How we going to feel about people marrying into other nations. It's going it's important for everything that we're about to see. That's a, that, that's going to happen. Okay. Any questions? So uh, doing a little bit of a recap. So uh, we made it all the way from Genesis and now we're here. And you can see that most people, when they start to read the Bible or they don't know how to get into it or stuff that they don't necessarily understand, one of the prophet books and books like this, they stay away from. They have no idea what's being said and what's being talked about. So with you guys, you know, having this understanding now, you've read Isaiah, you've read Jeremiah, you've read uh, Jonah. So you can see how all of them talked about the impending doom. We're finally there. All of those threats that the Most High God made, made good on every single one of them so now you guys can say okay no i understand you know some of the prophet books maybe not all of it like it's where as it pertains to prophecy and stuff that still has to happen but at least when you read some of these books you don't have to be so intimidated because you know what god is talking about with with israel and jerusalem um as far as the history goes in reading kings and chronicles and stuff like that so um getting into lamentations now you can see that all of the big trash that Israel was talking to the prophets and killing them and ignoring them. Now you can see how every single one of those people feel in this book. Jeremiah is describing every single one of those emotions like, dang, like that thing really happened. Yeah, buddy. All right, well, let's pray out. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me see. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Sister Sharon. Let's pray out. All right, so I would be.